Okay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Well, welcome everyone to the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. But it's also a very special day for me, because one year ago today exactly was when I made solemn profession as a Dominican and made vows for life. And it's also special because this Mass right now happens to be my 101st Mass as a priest. So it's great to be here with you all. I was a mathematician, so I like counting. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Oh, 
us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book <coughs> Yeah sorry A reading from the book of Deuteronomy Moses said to the people Now Israel hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will you give evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear of all these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nations has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. justice will live in the presence of the Lord. No one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. No one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who harms not his fellow man nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. No one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Who lends not his money at usury, and accepts no bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. No one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of James. Dearest brothers and sisters, 
All good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed, us, he willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves, for there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders? but instead eat a meal with unclean hands. He responded, Well did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship, teaching as doctrines human precepts. You disregard God's command, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from the outside can defile that person, but the thing that comes from out, from within, are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, are evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance. All these things come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. There we go, that's a little bit better. So we do have a bunch of tables over here under the underhang that has lots of shade, so if you want to come on down, you're more than welcome to. We heard in our psalm today, Adrian sung to us, the one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Today, we use and hear that word justice a lot. We hear about social justice, racial justice, economic justice, climate justice, and the list goes on and on and on. Because of this, the many times, like I hear people talking about justice, 
I'm reminded about a scene from a movie, The Princess Bride. Anyone? Okay, good. It's a good movie. I recommend it. It's kid-friendly too, right? It's kid-friendly? It's not, yeah, it's pretty kid-friendly. All right. So for those of you who haven't seen it, here's the scene I'm thinking about. There's a guy named Vinzini, little tiny short guy who thinks he's this brilliant, sophisticated philosopher. And he keeps running around using the word inconceivable. And he's saying it again and again and again. And then the hired swordsman in Tico Montoya, you killed my father, prepare to die, right? Love that. So Tico Montoya gets fed up with this and finally he turns to him and says, you know, you keep using that word. I don't think you know what, no, I'm sorry. I do not think it means what you think it means, right? So, it's a funny scene, but it reminded me of this, this word we throw in a lot, justice. So what does justice mean? Our Catholic Catechism says, justice is the moral virtue that consists in the constant and firm will to give right due to God and to neighbor, and vice versa. On the secular side, I went to the website and looked up in Webster, and it defines justice as the assignment of merited rewards or punishments. I think we get into trouble in our world today with justice when we forget that sort of punishment piece or use punishment when it really shouldn't be used. So our society today, well, our society used to be heavily influenced by a Judeo-Christian mindset. We understood there was a God, there was an original sin, and a fall from grace. And we inherited this fallen nature. It doesn't mean we are horrible people. We are still God's children and have a loving father. But from time to time, we sin. Sometimes they're small sins. We call them venial. Other times we have big sins. We call them mortal because it kind of kills our relationship with God. Either way, both types of sins require justice. I remember my epiphany moment with justice. When I was coming out of my decade of decadence, lots of mortal sins, I realized God gave me sort of this moment of clarity and he showed me myself, he showed me my life. And I realized that if God were truly just and gave me justice, I'd be dead and I would be in hell. I don't say that kind of flippantly. It's a very scary moment in my life, right? But that sort of revelation, that epiphany God gave me, really challenged me and said, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to continue on this pathway you're on? Or are you going to change your life? God would have been completely justified in strict justice to let me go on the path that I was on. But he offered me and everybody else that wants it another path. He offered me mercy. I came to know that Jesus Christ died on the cross so that my sins could be forgiven. Jesus Christ's death upon the cross also satisfied justice. So because Christ satisfied justice, I could receive mercy from God. This is how justice and mercy can come together. Experiencing God's forgiveness and his mercy, mercy changed my worldview. I know that I'm a sinner in need of mercy and salvation. And this realization helped me to be more merciful and forgiving to others. Am I perfect? No. Talk to Father John, right? But I'm a lot better than I used to be. I think the issue with justice for some in our society today is when we reject or forget about God and sin and forgiveness and mercy, our understanding and our practice of justice can become distorted. St. John Paul II wrote about this when he said, where justice is separated from mercy, justice becomes cruel and unjust. Here's why. Let's say someone doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in sin. Well, guess what? They've never experienced forgiveness. If you don't experience forgiveness, you're less likely to offer forgiveness to another. If someone never experiences mercy, 
they're less likely to give it to another. In my personal life, in the lives of the people I've worked with as a priest, I really see how unconfessed sin and this lack of an experience of forgiveness and mercy leads to projection, leads to anger, leads to wrath, leads to revenge. Now, the difference between justice and revenge is that revenge just wants to hurt somebody for the sake of hurting them, where justice says, wait a second, there might be some punishment due here, but I'm doing it out of mercy. So what happens is this person sees problems in the world. None of them can be traced back to themselves, so therefore it's everybody else's problem. This is where justice can become cruel and unjust because this leads people to a place of anger. And it's not a righteous anger. We saw righteous anger in the scriptures, right? Jesus was angry in the temple and moved to correct the injustice. It just becomes this emotional anger and this wrath. This helps people to want to demonize the other side, the other person, because they believe this person is beyond redemption. This leads to camps being drawn because we stop listening to one another. And all of a sudden, you just need a spark, and all hell literally breaks loose. Because that's what the devil wants. The devil wants to divide us. The devil wants to think that we are irredeemable of one another. He wants to sow those seeds of separation. And this is where justice, separated from mercy, becomes cruel and unjust. Now, don't get me wrong. There are lots of things going in in our world that call for justice, call for true justice. Open up your newspaper today and you will see them all there. I will never deny we should be working for justice. However, I believe it has to be done in the right way. If we're gonna work on external injustices, we have to start. We have to start from a place of grace. We have to start from a place of holiness. Then we have to be open to forgiving other people's sins, present and past. We have to be open to the possibility of giving mercy to another person. And then we should ultimately want reconciliation, bringing that person back into the fold. So in conclusion, I'm going to modify Inigo Montoya's words a little bit. We keep using that word, justice. Let's pray we always use it correctly so we can live out today's psalm. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Now let us stand and profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us bring all of our prayers to our Heavenly Father.
for Pope Francis, bishops, and pastors, that they may exercise wisdom shepherding their flock and guiding the church according to the commandments of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders throughout the world, that they may guard against evils arising from greed, deceit, envy, arrogance, and other things that can defile, and spend themselves in seeking peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the particular struggles now being experienced in Afghanistan, that God's own hand will guide these things in accordance with his will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For strength against evils that come from within, for the light of Christ to break in the hearts of all, that all people may act rightly in charity and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill or who are facing trials and hardships, especially those most directly affected by COVID, that they will experience God's healing presence in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us to meet the Lord, including the recently deceased Emmanuel Barbario and all deceased victims in this week's terrorism in Afghanistan, and especially for Margaret O'Hara, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving and merciful Father, we bring you all these prayers and we ask that you answer them through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we acclaim, Holy. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your 
resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the fifth Sunday of the month. When that happens, we take a collection for St. Vincent de Paul. That allows us to help our brothers and sisters in need right here locally. So you'll see uh, little plexiglass cubes. If you'd like to make a donation to St. Vincent de Paul, you can do that. Religious education starts in about two weeks or so. So please sign up your little ones for religious education. We're always looking for catechists. So if you want to be a catechist, you can talk to me after mass. And then tomorrow night at 7 p.m., Father John is going to be leading the last uh, book club gathering for the book on the mass. So you can join us for that. And then right after Mass, Neri, our uh, Director of Religious Education, will be having a, uh, a youth ministry um, meeting, 7th grade and above. We're doing lemonade and all kinds of fun snacks. So by all means, you can join, if you're in 7th grade and above, join Neri over by the parish hall. And then if you're 6th grade and below, I'll see if I can get some more ice pops out. I forgot, but I think we have some. So meet me over here for ice pops, 7th through 12th over there. If you're in either one of those groups, sorry. Just deal with it. There'll be four stations for uh, communion, one, two, three, four, and I'll have the low gluten hosts. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord. Yeah. 
this is one monastic trinity Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord, our hope eternally. Jesus Christ, the King of glory, everlasting Son of God, humble was your virgin mother, by the lonely path you trod. By your cross is sin defeated, hell confronted face to face. Have no hope it to believers, sinners justified by grace. Christ at God's right and victorious, you will judge the world you made. Lord in mercy, help your servants for whose freedom you have paid. Raise us up from us to glory, God us from us in today, King and throne above our praises, save your people, God we pray.
Thank you. 